Thanks for dropping by and joining me for my daily devotions for December 12th, 2022. 12-12-22. We're going to look at Hebrews chapter 7, uh, Luke chapter 1. Start our journey through the Gospel of Luke, Math, uh, Psalm 25, and Isaiah chapter 19. Let's pray. Father, thank you for speaking to us in your word. Um, crawl inside us with the truth we discover there and change our hearts with the power of the Holy Spirit to reflect your truth and your will. So use this time together in your word, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Hebrews chapter 7. We're going to look at the Melchizedekian priesthood, believe it or not, and some other stuff. Okay. This Melchizedek was king of Salem. That was the name of Jerusalem before Jerusalem was Jerusalem. It means peace, I think. He was a king of Salem and priest of God Most High. He met Abraham returning from the defeat of the kings and blessed him. And Abraham gave him a tenth of everything. First, his name means king of righteousness. There it is, king of righteousness. And also king of Salem means king of peace. There it is. Without father or mother, without genealogy, without beginning of days or end of life, like the Son of God, he remains a priest forever. Just think about how great he was. Even the patriarch Abraham gave him a tenth of, of the plunder. Now, the law requires the descendants of Levi who become priests to give a tenth from the people. That is their brothers, even though their brothers are descended from Abraham. This man, however, did not trace his descent from Levi, yet collected a tenth from Abraham and blessed him who had the promises. And without doubt, the lesser person is blessed by the greater. In one, in, uh, in the one case, the tenth is collected by men who die, but in the other case, by him who is declared to be living. One might even say that Levi, who collects the tenth, paid the tenth through Abraham, because when Melchizedek met Abraham, Levi was still in the body of his ancestor. In other words, the priesthood hadn't been born yet. If perfection could be attained through the Levitical priesthood, for on the basis of it the law was given to the people, why was there still need for another priest to come, one in the order of Melchizedek, not in the order of Aaron? For when there is a change in the priesthood, there must be a change in the law. He of whom these things are said belonged to a different tribe, and no one from that tribe has ever served at the altar. For it is clear that our Lord descended from Judah, and in regard to that tribe Moses said nothing about priests. And what we have said is even more clear if another priest like Melchizedek appears, one who has become a priest not on the basis of a regulation as to the ancestry, but on the basis of the power of an indestructible life. For it is declared, you are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. The former regulation is set aside because it was weak and useless, for the law made nothing perfect, and a better hope is introduced by which we draw near to God. And it was not without an oath, Others became priests without an oath, without without any oath. But he became a priest with an oath when God said to him, The Lord has sworn and will not change his mind. You are a priest forever. Because of this oath, Jesus has become the guarantee of a better covenant. Now, there have been many of these priests since death prevented them from continuing in office. But because Jesus lives forever... He, is a, he has a permanent priesthood. Therefore, he is able to save completely those who come to God through him because he always lives to intercede for them. Such a high priest meets our need, one who is holy and blameless, pure, set apart from sinners, exalted above the heavens. Unlike the other high priests, he does not need to offer sacrifices day after day, first for his own sins, because he had none, and then for the sins of the people. He sacrificed for their sins for all when he offered himself when he offered himself, he died on the cross. That's what that means. For the law appoints to appoints high priests. For the law appoints as high priests men who are weak. But the oath which came after the law appointed the Son, who has been made perfect forever. Luke chapter one. We we'll begin our walk through the Gospel of Luke, which is. Substantial, substantial gospel of Luke. A lot, of, a lot of stuff there. It was, it's very, very thorough. And uh, the first chapter is expansive. It's long. Many have undertaken to draw up an account of the things that have been fulfilled among us, just just as they were handed down to us by those who were first, who first were eyewitnesses. 
and servants of the word. Therefore, since I myself have carefully investigated everything from the beginning, it seemed good also to me to write an orderly account to you, most excellent Theophilus, so that you may know uh, the certainty of the things that have been taught. More scholarly approach here. The, the, uh, uh, Luke was a scholar. He's a trained person, trained in literature. He's also a physician. In the time of Herod, the king of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah who belonged to the priestly division of Ab Abijah. His wife, Elizabeth, was also a descendant of Aaron. Both of them were upright in the sight of God, observing all the Lord's commandments and regulations blamelessly. But they had no children because Elizabeth was barren and they were both well along in years. That meant they're old. <laughs> Once when Zechariah's division was on duty and he was serving as priest before God, he was chosen by lot, according to the custom of the priesthood, to go into the temple of the Lord and burn incense. And when the time for burning incense came, all the, all the assembled worshipers were praying outside. When an angel of the Lord appeared to him, then an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing at the right side of the altar of incense. When Zechariah saw him, he was startled and was gripped with fear. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear a son, and you will give him the name John. He will be a joy and a delight to you, and many will rejoice because of his birth. For he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He is never to take wine or other fermented drink. He will be filled with the Holy Spirit even from birth. Many of the people of Israel will bring back, he will bring back to the Lord their God, and he will go on before the Lord in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Zechariah asked the angel, how can I be sure of this? I'm an old man and many... And my wife is, is well along in years. The angel answered, I'm Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God and I have, I have been sent to speak to you and tell you the good news. And now you will be silent and not able to speak until the day this happens because you did not believe my words, which came true at the proper, in their, which will come, will come true in their proper time. <laughs> Meanwhile, the people were waiting for Zechariah and wondering why he stayed so long in the temple. When he came out, he could not speak to them. They realized that he'd seen a vision in the temple, for he kept making signs to them, but remained unable to speak. When his time of service was completed, he returned home, and after this, his wife Elizabeth became pregnant and for five months remained in seclusion. The Lord has done this for me, she said. In these days, he has shown his favor and taken away my disgrace among the people. In the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, to a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You found favor with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son. You are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I'm a virgin? The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you, so the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who is said to be barren is in her sixth month, for nothing is impossible with God. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be to me, I love this. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be to me as you have said. And then the angel left her. She was very young. She could have been somewhere between 13 and 16 years of age. At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting and the baby in her womb leaped and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice, she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. Uh, but why am I so favored, that, so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. The baby in my womb leaped for joy. Notice that. That's important. Blessed is he who has believed what the Lord has told her will, that what the Lord has told her will be accomplished. And Mary said, 
My soul glorifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. And he's brought down rulers from their thrones. And he has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things. He has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant, his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, even as said to our fathers. Mary stayed with Elizabeth about three months and then returned home. When it was time for Elizabeth to have her baby, she gave birth to a son. Her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord had shown her great mercy and they shared her joy. On the eighth day, they came to, the, to circumcise the child and they were going to name him after his father, Zechariah. Uh, but his mother spoke up and said, no, he's to be called John. They said to her, there is no one among your relatives who has that name. Then they made signs to his father to find out what he would like to name the child. He asked for a writing tablet. Remember, he couldn't speak. The Lord shut his mouth wide open so he couldn't speak until until he, until the baby was born. He had, he had told him about it. Asked for a writing tab tablet to everyone's astonishment. He wrote his name is John. Immediately, his, his mouth was opened, his tongue was loose, and he began speaking, praising God. The neighbors were all filled with awe, and throughout the hill country of Judea, people were talking about all these things. Everyone who has heard this wondered about it, asking, What then is this going to be? For the Lord has the Lord's hand is with him. His father Zechariah was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied, Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, because he has come and redeemed his people. He has raised up a horn of salvation for, for us in the house of his servant David. And as he has said through his holy prophets long ago, salvation from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. The oath he swore to our father Abraham to rescue us from the hand of our enemies and to enable us to serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. And you, my child, be called a prophet of the Most High, for you will go on before the Lord to prepare the way for him, to give his people the knowledge of salvation through the forgiveness of their sins, because of the tender mercy of our God, for which the rising sun will come to us from heaven, to shine on those who are living in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet on, into the path of Christ. The child grew, became strong in spirit, and he lived in the desert until he appeared publicly to Israel. That child was John the Baptist. Cousin, probably, of Jesus. Then, Psalm 25. Another one of these Psalms of David. Psalm chapter 25. And uh, I, the, the longer I live, the more the Psalms mean to me. They're powerful. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. In you I trust, O oh my God. Do not let me put to shame, nor let my enemies triumph over me. No one whose hope is in you will ever be put to shame, but they will be put to shame who are treacherous without excuse. Show me your way, O oh Lord. Tell me your paths. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are my our God, my Savior, and my hope is in you all day long. Remember, O oh Lord, your great mercy and love, for they are from of old. Remember not the sins of my youth and my rebellious ways, according to your love, remember me, for you are good, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord, therefore the, he instructs sinners in his ways, and he guides the humble in what is right, and teaches them his way. All the ways of the Lord are loving and faithful for those who keep the demands of his covenant. For the sake of your name, O Lord, forgive my iniquity, though it is great. Who then is the man who fears the Lord, who will instruct him in the way he chooses for him? He will spend his days in prosperity and his descendants will inherit the land. The Lord confides in those who fear him and makes his covenant known to them. His eyes are ever, my eyes are ever on the Lord for only he will release my feet from the snare. In other words, keep your eyes on the Lord. He's the guy that's going to get you out of trouble. Turn to me and be gracious to me for I am lonely and afflicted. The troubles of my heart have multiplied. Free me from my anguish. Look upon my affliction and my distress and take away all my sins. Show how my enemies have increased and how fiercely they hate me. Guard my life and rescue me. 
Let me not be put to shame, for I take refuge in you. My integrity and my uprightness protect me because my hope is in you. Redeem Israel, O God, from all their troubles. And then the 19th chapter of Isaiah the prophet. Keep thinking about Isaiah. One of these days, I should take a whole bunch of time and spend months studying it. There's so much there to be understood. 19th chapter of Isaiah. An oracle concerning Egypt. Sit, uh, see the Lord rides on a swift cloud and is coming to Egypt. The idols of Egypt tremble before him and the hearts of the Egyptians melt within him. I will stir up Egyptian against Egyptian. Brother will fight against brother, neighbor against neighbor, city against city, kingdom against kingdom. The Egyptian will lose heart and I will bring their plans to nothing. They will consult the idols and the spirits of the dead, the mediums and the spirits. I will hand the, the Egyptian over to the Lord, to the power of cruel master, and a fierce king will rule over them, declares the Lord, the Lord Almighty. The waters of the river will dry up and the riverbed will be parched and dry. The ca canals will stink. The streams of Egypt will dwindle and dry up. The reeds and rushes will wither. Also the plants along the Nile. At the month, at the mouth of the river, every sown field along the Nile will become parched. It will blow away and be no more. The fishermen will groan and lament. All who cast hooks into the Nile, those who throw nets on the water will pine away. Those who work with combined combed flax will despair. The weavers of the fine linen will lose hope. The workers in cloth will be dejected. And all the wages of the earners will be sick. All the wage earners will be sick at heart. The officials of Zoan are nothing but fools. The wise counselors of Pharaoh give senseless advice. How can you say to Pharaoh, I am one of the wise men, a disciple of the ancient kings? Where are your wise men? Let them know you are let them know you and make known make known what the Lord Almighty has planned against Egypt. The officials of Zoan have become fools. The leaders of Memphis are deceived. The cornerstones of the people of her peoples have led Egypt astray. The Lord has poured into them a spirit of dizziness and make Egypt stagger in all she does. As a drunkard staggers around in his vomit, there is nothing Egypt can do, head or tail, palm branch or reed. In that day, the Egyptians will be like women. They will shudder with fear at the uplifted hand of the Lord Almighty raises against them. And the land of Judah will bring terror to the Egyptians. Everyone to whom Judah is mentioned will be terrified because of what the Lord Almighty is planning against them. In that day, five cities in Egypt will speak the language of Canaan and swear allegiance to the Lord Almighty. One of them will be called the city of destruction. In that day, there will be an altar uh, to the Lord in the heart of Egypt and a monument to the Lord at its border. It will be a sign and a witness to the Lord Almighty in the land of Egypt. When they cry out to the Lord because of their oppressors, he will send them a savior and a defender and he will rescue them. So the Lord will make himself known to the Egyptians. And in that day, they will acknowledge the Lord and will worship and sacrifice grain offerings. They will make vows to the Lord and keep them. The Lord will strike Egypt with a plague. He will strike them, strike them and heal them. They will turn to the Lord and he will respond to their pleas and heal them. In that day, there will be a highway from Egypt to Assyria. The Assyrians will go to Egypt and the Egyptians to Assyria. The Egyptians and the Assyrians will worship together. In that day, Israel will be, will be the third along, the, along with Egypt and Assyria, a blessing to, on the earth. The Lord Almighty will bless them, saying, Blessed be Egypt, my people, Assyria, my handiwork, and Israel, my inheritance. Let's pray. Father, thank you for speaking to us today. And um, impress on our hearts the truth you have for each of us. Make us new because you've applied the word to our lives with the power of the Holy Spirit, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless your hearts. Have a great day.